Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us today for Super Bowl 55 media availability with Tampa Bay Buccaneers inside linebackers coach Mike Caldwell. To ask a question, please use the raise hand function and we will get to you. We will start with a first question from Christopher Heidel. Hi, Coach Caldwell. Yeah, how you doing? Doing good. We, we are located in Baltimore, and you were with the Ravens for one year in 1996. What was it like being there when their first season, and uh, why did you even stick around for a, a couple more years? Well, it was all about the move from Cleveland, uh, going to Baltimore. Uh, if you think back, it was uh, the first year – uh, we went from Cleveland to Baltimore and you went from one great fan base to another one. And it was just, uh, the experience was kind of, it was really unique because they were so passionate about, uh, wanting us there. And we ended up, uh, playing that season. And I think, uh, the start of something good came from it. Thanks. Thank you. The next question will be from Amy Just with the Times-Picayune. Good morning. Um, asking about Devin. Uh, in what ways has Devin White, in your view, elevated his game from last season as a rookie to now? I think uh, with Devin, it's just become like a second hand to him. Uh, he came in as a rookie and his talent was really on display he was able to run around and make it by natural ability. But I think the mental part of his game has really improved. Uh, he can call out plays. He understands what offenses are trying to, how they're trying to attack him. And he just really uh, helped out from a leadership standpoint as far as being out there, being a field general on defense and being able to just lead the defense. Do you think that him getting thrown into that role early last season as a rookie helped him kind of get used to it now, a year later? I, I think it did help him, uh, but he's been a leader all his life. You know, if you know him, you know that as soon as you meet him, uh, his personality just, just pops at you. And he's a guy that guys will follow. I always tell them, like, guys don't follow you because we, uh, we name you captain. Guys follow you because what you do daily and how you play on Sundays. Thank you. The next question will be from... Robert Mays with The Athletic. Hey, Mike, appreciate it. Uh, I, I wanted to ask about Levante. I, I just, it feels like at that position, it's rare for a guy to be as comfortable in space in coverage as he is moving forward as a blitzer, everything else. And he just seems to be so comfortable in both roles. Just his spatial awareness. What have you seen contribute to that, whether it's preparation, just how calm he can be? How is that trait just different from other linebackers you've been around? I think with Levante, the thing that you first notice is the game is slow for him. He's played for a number of years. And when the game starts to slow down for players, it's two things, whether you're seeing things over and over or your preparation. And he has unbelievable preparation. He'll come in meetings early, asking questions. Coach, what do you think about this? before we even watch the film. So his preparation is really key for him being able to go out there and make the plays that he's making. Can you think of an example of just something he came to you with during this season that's just like, man, did you see this? Well, basically, he was talking about uh, – it was one week he was matched up against a certain tight end, and he was talking about, Coach, if I play him this way, I think I can take this away from him before we had even started studying. I typically make cut-ups for them to study the different opponents, but – he had already jumped ahead and knew basically the route tree that the tight end was going to run. So his preparation is just, uh, is just really outstanding. He's ahead of the game, and it enables him to play the game the way he does, slow down for him. Thank you. The next question will be from Colin Cronin with Irish NFL Show. Hi, Coach. Greetings from across the Atlantic, from Dublin. Just interested in the preparations this week. Is it about trying to keep it as routine as possible? As always, uh, Coach Arians does a great job of 
just uh, letting us go out there and do what we've done. We have a routine that we do, and we just stick to that and really don't make any much more of it. Now, we got a little more media obligations, but other than that, we pretty much just try to keep the same schedule, keep the guys on the same schedule so uh, they can go out there and nothing really changes for them. Thank you. Thank you. The next question will be from Silas Home Stage with TV3. Oh, sorry. Hi, Mike. Uh, appreciate it. Um, yeah, and greeting from Denmark. And now we're really, really leaving America. Um, you have a very athletic uh, linebacking group, uh, especially with, with them in wide. How important is that coming into a game with, uh, with Mahomes as a mobile quarterback and as, as, as guys like Kelsey as well? It's always good to have good players. And in my room, I have uh, four good players, uh, Devin, Levante, Kevin, and Deon. So it's always good when, once you're going up against a high-powered offense that has weapons, you always want to be able to go out there and have your own uh, good players that play for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Our next question will be from Ben Standick. Hey, uh, Coach, uh, just to go back to, to, to Levante again, obviously he's been, he's been there, done that guy uh, in, in this league. What does his leadership mean for this defense and, and for a coach as well? You know, you're trying to get messages across to the team and to have a guy like that. What, what has he meant to you guys, especially during this uh, playoff run? Well, the thing about his leadership role, um, he's a guy that guys look to. And any time leaders step up uh, in the times where they're needed. There's been times throughout the season where things haven't been going well on the sideline and he called the guys up, get them together. And he has a calming presence about him. He's not out there. He's not going to panic. He, he has a calming presence that guys look to and they feed off of it. And when things aren't going well, he's a guy that we look to to get us out of a certain situation or come up with the play we need. And that's what he's been doing throughout his whole career. And he's continuing to do it. Thank you. We will go to Robert Mays with The Athletic again. Hey, Mike, in talking, having conversations about Levante, I think this applies to Devin as well. People have described him as an instinctive blitzer. And I'm wondering what you think goes into that. What do you think gives guys a certain feel for when to add on, how to avoid blocks? I mean, what eventually kind of plays into that instinctive feel for that exact kind of element of the game? First thing that comes, uh, comes with it is ability. They're athletic guys. They have speed and they have toughness. They have physicalness. But then after that, they go and it's just not they're running after the quarterback. They have a breakdown weekly of how they're going to attack a lineman, how they're going to attack a running back. So the preparation, again, goes into them uh, having success on Sundays. They just don't go out there and they just attack the quarterback. There's a way. They have a plan and they've studied their plan, and it's uh, working for them. Can you think of an example of Levante just kind of having that really good approach for a certain running back or a lineman this year where it's just like, man, what we looked at this week showed up on Sunday? It's just uh, they back early on in the season, there was a, a way that a running back was blocking. He was stepping up, and he was stepping up pretty hard, and we ended up studying it, saw it on film, and throughout the week, we game plan that if he was going to do it this way, we were going to attack him this way and end up working out. And I think he uh, got a sack out of it. I will give it a little bit more. So we have some more questions here. Okay, our next question, we will go to Rob Madi with the AP. 
Hey, Mike, you played for Bill Belichick. You played for Andy Reid. You're coaching with Bruce Arians. What have you learned from playing for some of the greatest coaches in NFL history and now coaching with one? What has been, what sticks out in your mind? What are some of the things that you can take from each guy? The thing that really jumps out is how detailed they all are. Um, they leave no stone unturned. Uh, the preparation weekly, they go in, they do a great job of putting players in a, the best position to make plays. So just all three of those guys, there's, they're so unique in the way they do it, but they all are very detailed and no stone is left unturned. Okay, we're going to go to uh, Rob with the AP one more time. Go ahead, Rob. Hey, Mike, again, uh, going back to the 01 season, if you remember what that was like, the Eagles stepped up and, and had a lot of success, and you're playing for Andy then. what? At what point when you were with him did you realize that this guy – he, he's got something special in him as a coach that uh, we could have never figured out two decades later that he'd eventually be a Hall of Fame coach. But what, did you did you realize that at any point? Well, you you knew early uh, playing for playing as long as I played. You kind of understand when you get someone that's a little different. And Coach Reed came in and he the program was I guess organization was doing a good job of being a decent team. But you can see early on that the team was headed in the right direction with uh, the different changes that he made. It was just the way he had a way of, like I said, letting players do what they do and do it well. I can remember him talking about offensive linemen, that they're in a, a four by four box. They don't have to worry about getting outside that box. If you master that box, you'll be successful. Just different ways he was able to reach players and get them to play to their uh, utmost potential. Thank you. Uh, the next question we will go with Joshua Allen with the Bucks Reporter. Hey coach, how are you doing today? Hey, what's going on? Uh, so Levante David, obviously one of the longest tenured players uh, never been to the playoffs. Now he's in, on his way to the Super Bowl. Can you speak on the emotion that it's carried over to some of the other teammates as a Devin White or any of these guys that are really are trying to play um, for him as well? When, when you have a guy that's a leader and is as well-respected as Levante is, guys do uh, want to get them where they've never gone before. Now, during the week, uh, early on in the season, we – really were getting on him about not playing for so long and not being able to get to the playoffs. But deep down, I think everyone on the team wanted it for themselves, but just a little extra wanted it for Levante because the type of guy he is, the type of player he's been and what he means to this organization. So it's always that little extra that you want to do it for a guy that's meant so much to you as a teammate and also to the, uh, to the organization. Thank you, Coach. The next question will go with Ron Higgins. Yeah, Mike, uh, can you hear me? Yes, gotcha. Yeah. Um, I, I was just wondering, uh, on, on, on Devin White, uh, the first time you saw him, did you see him on film or, uh, you know, his LSU stuff, or was it when he showed up for uh, mini camp? And, and I guess your first impressions of him, did you know right away this guy was different? Well, um, it really started off the scouts brought us a couple of tapes of different linebackers to look at. And 
think his uh, before we drafted him, that was the year in that spring we were looking uh, looking for someone, and it was amazing how he jumped off the screen. I typically, when I'm looking at players, I'll look and I'll, especially for a linebacker, I'll look and see if I notice him in the first quarter. Well, the first two plays, I noticed him, and it was really remarkable. And then I just kept studying and studying and found out that he's a guy that has a unique ability and went down, we visited, and found out that he was a guy who was a perfect fit for our organization. Uh, the leadership, change of culture, just uh, everything uh, about him was what we wanted, and we're happy to have him. You talked about his personality, how it jumps off at you. I mean, that had to be a bonus once you got him in camp and realized you saw him every day and how he comes every day just pumped up, ready to play, and always enthusiastic. Well, that's the thing about him. He loves the game. He loves the game, so it's not like he's going to be out there and it's work for him. It's a game that he loves, and daily he comes with the energy which uh, is needed, and he just stepped into the leadership role. It was it was easy for him. You can look at his personality and tell that wherever he's at, he's going to be the guy that wants to be the center of attention. <laughs> and uh, we, we needed that, and uh, he's doing a great job for us. One last question. Has he gotten you on a horse yet? Actually, I've, I've been to a, a stable with him, haven't got on a horse, but being from Tennessee, uh, I've been around horses a little bit, but this is the first time I got back and haven't gotten on one, but uh, I was able to pet them and feed them a little bit. So uh, it, it, it's coming. Okay, the next question, we will go with Danny Heifetz with the ringer. Hey, Coach, how you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm, I'm doing great. I like this whole Zoom thing. Question for you. Why is Travis Kelsey hard to cover, and why do you think your linebackers are well-suited to cover him? He's hard to cover because he's athletic and he's really smart. He's a tight end that knows how to play the game. You can sit there and you can say, well, this route's going to happen at this uh, distance, this route's going to happen at this distance, but – he has the athletic ability to be able to get to his route depth and do it a, a different way. He's uh, smart and able to find, uh, find holes, get away from the defense. And I think uh, the quarterback is comfortable with him. He's able to throw the ball. He'll throw him open when he is covered. He'll uh, put him in position so he can go out there and make plays. But I think uh, our defense as a whole, is going to take a really a, the whole unit to be able to try to limit his uh, catches and touches. The front will have to get a pressure on the quarterback. Um, linebackers will take a role and cover him along with the safeties and corners because he's not just a, a true tight end. He's a guy that can – they split him out in space. So it'll be a bunch of people trying to get hands on him and cover him. Thank you, Coach. The next question will go with Josh Padilla with MTSU Athletic. Blue Raiders in the house. Hey, Coach. Um, I know you take a lot of pride in your alma mater. You got two uh, former Blue Raiders going against you uh, in, on the Chiefs defense and Charvarius Ward and Darius Harris. How much pride do you take in seeing those guys on the Super Bowl field? Oh, it's, it's always good. Anytime uh, you get a chance to play against someone from Middle Tennessee, you know you're going to be in for it. Uh, it's a great program that produces a lot of hard-nosed players. So we just uh, – I'm just happy that they were able to make it. Um, they've been doing a good job for the Chiefs. So after the game, uh, hopefully we'll be able to sit down and take a picture and be able to show a little love to MTSU. Thanks, Coach. We will go with Ben Standick. Hey coach, sort of a, just a broad question as a linebackers coach. Obviously, um, it's hard to find guys who can you know be out on the field for three downs these days. What, what and each team can use different types of defenses, especially more nickel defense with with the way the passing games are. But what do you kind of see as sort of the the key traits for for guys to be able to stay out on the field for for three downs? What are things that you kind of look for, whether you're free agency or the draft, guys that you kind of gravitate towards to you um, for for that type of situation? I think uh, 
athleticism is one. Just like you said, uh, the days of linebackers coming down and bloody and noses of offense guards, are, that's no longer. You have to be able to play in space. You have to be able to move. So that's uh, one of the things I look for. And then intelligence. As a linebacker, you're pretty much going to be the quarterback of the defense. You're going to have to fit the run and also play in coverage. So you have to be well-rounded and be able to do everything on the field. So you have to be smart, has to be athletic. And then uh, the toughness, uh, that's also a big trait. Thank you. Okay, if there are no more questions, this will conclude today's media availability. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.